The Gladius is arguably one of the most important defining weapons of the Roman army, which I have to say is kind of ironic considering the fact that the Gladius is not actually Roman in origin. It's not something that they invented. Which, yeah, that is right, the Gladius, the iconic blade that conquered the empire for Rome, yeah, that was something that was made in Iberia. You see, we know of its origins thanks to the Soda, which was a Byzantine encyclopedia that covers the origin of the blade, and I'll be honest, from all this probably additionally comes from the fact that when uh, Hannibal invaded Rome and kind of started burning everything to the ground, there was a lot of Iberian mercenaries that were in there that really gave the Romans some intimate knowledge of the blade, though this was definitely without their consent at that time. Okay, so we know where the Gladius came from, but how exactly was it adopted by Rome in the first place? Well, Rome adopted the Gladius sometime around 200 BC. Prior to this blade, the thing that the Romans used was something that was more akin to the Greek-style Xephos, which was a double-edged, single-handed blade that was something that was used as a kind of sidearm by the hoplites. But once the Romans adopted the Gladius, well, they were going to adopt tactics that were going to help them specifically utilize that blade to its full killing potential. Once the Gladius was adopted, the Romans would develop tactics that would use the full advantage of the tactical ability of the weapon. What the Roman military preferred to do was to fight hand-to-hand -hand in order to utilize the full effects of their superior training and weaponry. The entire idea behind this was to be aggressive, be quick, get in close, and do as much damage as possible in a short amount of time in order to maximize the effect of the weapon. Roman tactical doctrine specifically emphasized utilizing the shield, something that was known as a scutum, in order to cover as much of the body as physically possible in order to make sure that when an enemy was attacking them, that there was as little of themselves being exposed as possible. Simultaneously, the scutum could be used as an offensive weapon to devastating effect. What they would do then is simultaneously move in close with the gladius to provide quick thrust to break past an enemy defensive formation in a way that they couldn't respond. I mean, you have to remember that at the time that this is all taking place, the majority of militaries around the world, or at least in the case of the Mediterranean, are fighting utilizing javelins, spears, and shield wall-like formations, as in the Greek style with hoplites, or, since it's a couple hundred years past that point, phalanxes of pikemen with very long spears, ones that are packed in very dense formation designed to present an unpenetrable wall towards the enemy. But if the majority of people are utilizing very long spears in order to fight, then this means that if you are able to get in close with a shield and short sword past the enemy's spear, then that means that the length of the enemy's weapon is actually going to work against them, and they're not going to be able to respond to you. Hence, the strength of the gladius and aggression. The thing with the gladius is that the stab wounds from it were almost always fatal, since the target for most of these thrusts was going to be directly into the opponent's abdomen. And when you've taken a stab to the gut... Well, the gut is not typically something that you're capable of recovering from easily, though it could also be used for slashing and cutting, and Roman legionnaires were trained to specifically slash the kneecaps beneath the shield wall or to cut the throat of their enemies while charging in testuda formation. In fact, one of the best descriptions of the impact of the gladius and warfare can be found in the work of the Roman historian Livy, as Livy would describe the war between the Romans and the Macedonians in 200 BC, saying, quote, when they had seen bodies chopped to pieces by the Gladius Hispanius, in other words, the Hispanic Gladius, arms torn away, shoulders and all, or heads separated from bodies, with the necks completely severed or vitals laid open, and other fearful wounds, realized in a general panic what the weapons and what men they had to fight. It was, um, not exactly a pretty sight for a lot of them there on the battlefield in brutal melee. So then the question becomes... Why would the Romans abandon a weapon that worked so incredibly well? Well, the reality of it is actually quite simple. Warfare changed. The people that they were fighting changed. The Gladius was no longer the same weapon that was going to be tactically viable in a scenario as others would be based upon their opponents. We need to really look and see what was happening at that time. Between the end of the 2nd century AD and the beginning of the 3rd century, the Gladius simply stopped being used by Roman infantry. Not to say that it didn't all happen at once, of course, this is something that, depending upon the legion, would gradually be phased out. Between the 2nd century AD and the beginning of the 3rd century, the gladius simply stopped being used by Roman infantry. Though, that's not to say that it was all happening at once, mind you. Different legions were going to phase things out at different times. The reality was, in most situations, the gladius simply wasn't really a good weapon for the battlefield that the soldiers were now fighting on. Most soldiers at this time reverted to either a longer blade called the Spatha, or they switched over to just a spear. The reason for this was that back when Rome was fighting with the Gladius, they were fighting in offensive wars, trying to claim territory, fighting against barbarians, and people that would fight in more of the Greek fashion. 
those in close order formation, either with shield walls or with simply phalanxes. In the end, this simply pretty much amounts to the same kind of thing. But towards the later half of the Empire, as they moved to fighting enemies in the east, including the Parthians, the Scythians, or any of the other horse tribes or people, the enemies that they were going up against at this time were not ones who were simple foot soldiers equipped with a spear that they could run past. No, it was guys on horses that were utilizing bows, which is not something that a Roman legionnaire is able to effectively fight with a short stabbing sword. It's just, it's not something that works very well. As a result, what ended up happening is that the Romans began to utilize more heavily armored cavalry, and then they would also simultaneously start utilizing mounted archers in the same fashion of the enemies that they themselves were fighting, though you oftentimes saw more of this on the Byzantine side of things, the Eastern Roman Empire, than in the case of the Western Roman Empire. Even when it comes to blades, the ones that were utilizing blades now were more oftentimes using spatha, a longer blade that is something that would be used for a cavalryman, but was now used by infantrymen so that they would be capable of hitting things at a further distance if they were being run down by a horseman. And thus it was that with time and circumstances and new enemies that the ancient and invincible Gladius of old, the thing that built the empire, was gradually replaced with the same kind of weapons of the people that they were fighting against. Which, to be fair, is the same kind of thing that happened with the Gladius in the first place, as that itself was a weapon of an enemy that was adopted by the Romans. Not everything lasts forever. And the Gladius couldn't do so either. But everyone, this has been Sakui with the History of Everything podcast. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed today's episode, and I ask that you please like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know down in the comment section below what it is that we should do next, and I look forward to seeing you all here next time. Goodbye, everyone, and have a good rest of your day.